All right. Lauren Boebert is finished. She's running in another congressional district, and it does not look good. It looks like we're going to be losing Lauren Boebert. I'll have more on this depressing news later on in the episode. A jury of seven men and two women only took three hours to decide that Donald J. Trump must pay E. Jean Carroll $83.3 million for defamation. Her attorneys were asking for something in the neighborhood of $25 million. A jury last year in a related case ordered Trump to pay her $5.5 million. On Saturday, E. Jean Carroll promised to do something good with the money. Well, I think she's already done something good. Carol said she will splurge on some luxury dog food for her great Pyrenees and her pit bull. The Economist reports this morning that while Donald Trump took to social media all week before the verdict, attacking E. Jean Carroll's morals, when the verdict finally came down, he was eerily silent. Not a peep on social media. Sounds like his attorney, Alina Haba, may have accidentally given Donald Trump some good advice. Trump's outlandish behavior and Alina Haba's obviously worked against them. In her closing argument, the lawyer for E. Jean Carroll told the jury, you saw how he has behaved throughout this trial. Rules don't apply to Donald Trump. Last year, when a jury awarded $5.5 million in damages for raping and then defaming E. Jean Carroll, Trump agreed to hand the money over to the court, which is holding on to it pending the appeal. The next day, he defamed her again, and that's what this trial was about. Hard to believe America only racked up $8 trillion in debt when this idiot was president. Now, $83.3 million is a much larger sum than last year's judgment. And according to the New York Times, Trump could conceivably hand over to the court $83.3 $83.3 million and have it sit there pending appeal. But does he have the money? Or he could get a bond, but that would mean he'd have to pay interest on the money. Plus, there is the minor issue of Donald Trump being the worst credit risk in American history. No bank will lend Donald Trump money. So, Where does it come from? Well, he's paying for everything through that super PAC, but there's very little cash left. So if any of his idiot supporters are listening, and I apparently I have some Trump supporters who who listen to this show, you should really donate more money to Trump's presidential campaign so he can pay his lawyers and these judgments, because that's where your donations are going to criminal trial lawyers, the enemy of the Republican Party, trial lawyers. You donate to Donald Trump, it goes right into the pocket of trial lawyers. Your billionaire candidate has zero collateral. So if you really love Donald Trump, stay stupid and give him the money you don't have. Now, He's already lost that civil fraud trial because he is a fraud, and he is awaiting Judge Arthur and Gorin's ruling on how much he has to pay in fines for being a fraud. New York State Attorney General Letitia James is asking for $370 million in fines. Judge Angoran has already ordered the dissolution of Trump's corporation in New York State. He's also ordered all of Trump's collateral in New York State to be sold off to liquidators. So how can Trump get a bond if his collateral has been ordered to be liquidated? And yes, it's pending appeal, but this all begs the question, what does Donald Trump have right now and what can he sell? Nothing, just his ignorant voters. Dumb, stupid, gullible voters who live vicariously through someone who has no life. 
So pony up the money. I know we have some Trump listeners. Pony up the money. He needs it. Nikki Haley responded to the verdict by telling her supporters, quote, $83 million in damages. America can do better than Donald Trump and Joe Biden, unquote. Why bring Joe Biden into it? What what does Joe Biden have to do with any of this? Judge Lewis Kaplan, who presided over both defamation lawsuits, thanked the jurors for their time and dismissed them, but not before warning those jurors, do not go public. Do not tell anyone you sat on this jury because it won't be safe for you. Imagine that. A a judge telling a jury, keep it quiet. You could get hurt. This is mobster stuff. Jurors' lives being threatened. Trump is a mobster. And what gives me solace is that any student of the mob knows it never ends well for mobsters. It never does. Meanwhile, Judge Arthur Angoran, who has been dealing with bomb threats and death threats from Trump supporters, is expected to hand down his ruling in the Trump civil fraud trial sometime next week. The Trump organization has been supervised by a court monitor for 14 months in accordance with a ruling by Judge Angoran when pretrial depositions began. The court-ordered monitor retired Judge Barbara Jones, spent 14 months observing the Trump Organization. And she issued a report on Friday to help Judge Angoran arrive at his decision. According to ABC News, the court-ordered monitor of the Trump Organization said she reviewed 3,000 documents during that period and that the Trump Organization was cooperative but essentially has no idea how to obey the law or, for that matter, run a business. This is why Donald Trump went bankrupt at least six times. She said that Trump employees tried to file the proper documents, but did so incorrectly and were often unable to meet deadlines. Why? Because Donald Trump only surrounds himself with people who are dumber than he is, like his voters. So donate to Donald Trump. Give him money. Support your local trial lawyer. I'm sure he's got a court case somewhere near you. Donate to his presidential campaign because it's all going to lawyers and the fines. The uh, court-ordered supervisor wrote, quote, It does not appear that there are adequate accounting and presentation standards, procedures, or training associated with the preparation of financial disclosures. To the extent adequate standards and procedures do exist, They do not appear to have been followed across the organization. She said the Trump organization lacked corporate governance. But let's put him back in the Oval Office uh, and keep sending Trump money. I know we have Trump supporters, and you do your own research, and you know something the the rest of us don't. So keep sending Trump your money because he's going to save you. He's going to save you. This is the mop-up for January 29th? Really? No, 28th. It's the 28th. Yes, it's January 28th, 2024. I'm David Feldman. Thank you for finding me. Please like and share this episode so I remain in your feed. This is an audio podcast, so take me with you on your next drive or your next walk, and download this show wherever you get your audio. The Nevada caucuses are on February 8th. That's a Thursday. Donald Trump held a rally Saturday night in Las Vegas where he insisted he's not suffering from dementia because he's got good genes. How does he know he has good genes? Because his Uncle John, he says, taught at MIT. Okay, then how do you explain Don Jr. and Eric? You say your family has good genes? Explain Junior and Eric. 
Are they adopted? Trump said his family has the smart gene because they were bred like racehorses. He said the Trumps were bred like racehorses. Well, I don't think the Trumps were bred to run as fast as a racehorse, so I guess that means they were bred to have the reading skills of one. Here's a general rule of the road. If you ever find yourself having to convince a couple of thousand people in Las Vegas that you're smart, you're stupid. Then Trump, and I'm not making this up, promised, quote, to bring peace through Earth. And then he said as president, he got Mexico to send 28,000 troops. But Trump didn't say where Mexico sent them or why. I'll have more on the presidential race later on in this episode. On Friday, President Joe Biden took on the fossil fuel industry and ordered his energy department to suspend all new projects for exporting liquefied natural gas. Biden said the energy department won't issue any new licenses until it studies how those exports contribute to man-made climate change. Biden said, quote, this pause on liquefied natural gas approval sees the climate crisis for what it is, the existential threat of our time. I thought Trump was the existential threat of our time, but apparently it's liquid natural gas, which I think you will find (laughs) throughout Donald Trump's suit after he gives a speech. It's just soaked in liquid natural gas. Biden added, quote, while MAGA Republicans willfully deny the urgency of the climate crisis, condemning the American people to a dangerous future, my administration will not be complacent. We will not cede to special interests. Unless, of course, they contribute way, way, way more money to my reelection campaign than they already are. He didn't say that, but it was implicit. The Courthouse News Service says America became the largest exporter of liquid natural gas after Russia's invasion of Ukraine in order to help Europe become less dependent on Putin for their energy. It has been nearly three years since Andrew Cuomo, the Democratic governor of New York, was forced to resign amid allegations of sexual misconduct. And now the Department of Justice has issued a scathing report concluding that Andrew Cuomo sexually harassed 13 staffers over an eight-year period. The Justice Department charges Cuomo with retaliation by firing four of those staffers after they complained. The Department of Justice says Cuomo touched several of these women in a sexual manner without consent, ogled, and gave them demeaning nicknames. Lindsay Boylan, who was a guest on this show, was the first to speak out about Cuomo's illegal touching. After the Department of Justice issued its report, Lindsay Boylan said, quote, these things happened. These things happened to me and other women, and then a huge bureaucracy tried to bury us for telling the truth. Never again will I ever let anyone or any system harm me and other women that way, unquote. The Department of Justice's findings are actually far graver than those issued by New York State Attorney General Letitia James, who, back in 2021, said she found Cuomo had assaulted and or harassed 11 women. New York State Attorney General Letitia James also won that civil fraud lawsuit against Donald Trump, proving he ripped off banks and insurers. And this month, her civil fraud trial against the National Rifle Association and its head, Wayne LaPierre, began. And it's not being covered. Nobody's covering this trial. Letitia James, the New York State Attorney General, has destroyed the National Rifle Association. New York State Attorney General Letitia James has destroyed... Wayne LaPierre. Now, there will be other gun rights organizations shilling for gun manufacturers, 
But thanks to New York State Attorney General Letitia James, it won't be the National Rifle Association, and it certainly won't be Wayne LaPierre. She broke the NRA and Wayne LaPierre. He leaves the National Rifle Association after 33 years on January 31st. He quit, humiliated the day her trial began. And thanks to Letitia James, he won't be getting that $1 million a year pension package he negotiated for himself. But keep donating to the National Rifle Association. Don't give it all to Donald Trump. Make sure you you save some for the National Rifle Association. Wayne LaPierre, the disgraced leader of the National Rifle Association, who leaves office on Wednesday, has been accused of conspiring with two other NRA executives to steal at least $45 million from donors. He testified on Friday in the New York State civil fraud trial that has been filed against the organization. The New York Times reports that prosecutors got LaPierre to admit that the gifts and luxury vacations he and his wife Susan received from NRA vendors were in fact direct violations of the NRA's bylaws and are not allowed by nonprofit charitable organizations like the National Rifle Association. Yes, the NRA is a nonprofit charitable organization. Who is the charity for, you ask? Weapons manufacturers. According to the New York State Attorney General, La Pierre, as the head of the NRA, funneled millions of dollars to various pass-through corporations who then kicked millions back to him by giving LaPierre use of their American Express cards and showering him and his wife with, with luxurious vacations on yachts. They, they got gifts like watches, clothing, and computers. The Attorney General says LaPierre used the NRA as his personal piggy bank, making it pay $250,000 to one clothing boutique in Beverly Hills alone, and even $800 for mosquito abatement at his mansion. Your NRA donations went towards mosquito abatement at his mansion. During LaPierre's testimony, he acknowledged that it was official policy for everyone working for the NRA to fly coach, but he admitted he violated it by booking flights for himself, his wife, and his niece on private jets and charged all the costs to the National Rifle Association. LaPierre said he had no idea what all that cost. When informed that each flight costs anywhere between fifteen dollars to $40,000, he said, Oh, NRA watch has been covering this trial extensively. I'm glad somebody is. NRA Watch reports that during his testimony, LaPierre may have perjured himself when he said that the head of NRA security told him he should fly on private jets. But NRA Watch reports that LaPierre had been flying on private jets years before the head of private security had even been hired. NRA Watch reports that during Friday's testimony, LaPierre admitted that he made the NRA pay for his family's vacations in the Bahamas, charging the NRA for private jets to ferry him, as well as separate private jets to ferry his niece to their island destinations. LaPierre testified that he was aware that an internal investigation revealed that his longtime aide, Millie Hallow, had spent hundreds of thousands of NRA dollars in the early to mid-2000s on things like her son's wedding. Aww. And though Millie Hallow didn't get fired for that, she did have her NRA credit card taken away. At least one of her NRA credit cards taken away. Because after the investigation, the internal investigation... 
Millie Hallow continued to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars of NRA money on a different credit card to hire limousines. Hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars spent on limousines over at the NRA. $1,285 was spent on a limousine to drive Millie Hallow's son from Washington, D.C. to New York. LaPierre was asked if these expenditures were in the best interest of the NRA. He said no. It was learned during testimony that LaPierre made the NRA pay the dues for his membership to a Donald Trump golf club. Donald Trump is scheduled to speak at an NRA forum next month, and he received millions and millions of dollars from the NRA when he was running for president back in 2016. Politico reported back in 2018 that the NRA was the single largest contributor to Donald Trump, donating $30 million to the Donald Trump Super PAC in 2016 alone. That's more than the NRA had ever donated to any presidential campaign in its history. There are some reports that the NRA was used as a straw donor funneling money to Donald Trump from Vladimir Putin. Senator Ron Wyden, the current chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, said back in 2019 that his investigation concluded that in 2016, the NRA was a foreign asset for Russia. He then said the IRS should consider taking away its tax-exempt status. Oh, did I mention the NRA doesn't have to pay taxes? New York State Attorney General Letitia James began her investigation into the NRA four years ago. Originally, she intended to dissolve the organization, but a pretrial judge ruled financial irregularities don't meet the threshold for a corporate death sentence. James has jurisdiction over the NRA because it was incorporated in New York State in 1871. The New York Times reports that legal costs now run the NRA tens of millions of dollars a year with revenue from dues down 40% since Trump was elected president. Everything he touches, everything he touches. After the lawsuit was filed, the NRA decided to file for bankruptcy protection with the hope of reincorporating in gun-friendly Texas, but a federal judge blocked the move. Everything he touches, everything Donald Trump touches. Earlier this month, the chairman of the Florida Republican Party, Christian Ziegler, was forced to resign after a woman with whom Ziegler and his wife engaged in a threesome accused Ziegler of rape. The rape charges were dropped last week by police who are now recommending prosecutors charge Ziegler with video voyeurism after he recorded a sexual encounter with that woman without her permission. That was the chairman of the Florida Republican Party up until early January of this year. Ziegler's wife, Bridget, was one of the founders of the anti-LGBTQ Moms for Liberty, which the Southern Poverty Law Center lists as a hate group. When news broke that Bridget Ziegler was performing lesbian sex acts in front of her husband, Moms for Liberty forced her to resign and scrubbed her name off the organization's website. You know... Good, wholesome family values. Moms for Liberty. Hate organization is all about having parents, uh, all about giving parents more say in what their children are taught. Bridget Ziegler has literally said sex education should only be taught 
at home. Well, in that case, I'm sure her children already qualify for PhDs. And now the chairman of Arizona's Republican Party, Jeff DeWitt, has resigned after audio surfaced of him offering a bribe 10 months ago to failed candidate for governor, election denier, Carrie Lake. Are you going to, are we going to see her? There she is. According, according to the audio made public by Carrie Lake, she wears a wire all the time. I'm not making that up. She audio tapes and videotapes everyone and everything. She doesn't want anything to be taken out of context. She's, she's wired. According to the audio made public by Carrie Lake, DeWitt offered her money or a lucrative job if she would stay out of politics for the next two years. Lake turned down the offer and is currently running for Senate. Well, some sad news. It's starting to look like Colorado Republican Lauren Boebert won't be returning to us after the 2024 elections. She just doesn't have the votes. If you remember, Boebert decided to abandon Colorado's third congressional district, where she is wrapping up her second term, and instead decided to run in the fourth congressional district for a seat being vacated by Ken Buck, a Republican, one of the two members of the Freedom Caucus who voted to certify the election for Joe Biden in 2020. Boebert barely got elected in 2022 by something like 600 votes. And the Democrat she lost to is running again, but this time with a campaign war chest that dwarfs, dwarfs hers. Plus, there was that incident when she vaped during a performance of Beetlejuice, where she was eventually thrown out for making noise and touching her boyfriend's war chest while he touched hers. Even worse, her boyfriend is a Democrat who owns a bar that allows drag queens to perform there. So she's leaving the third district. The Republican primary for Colorado's fourth is in June, and Boebert is up against eight other candidates. They held their first debate last week. Boebert did not do well. She was accused during the debate of being a carpetbagger, and she responded, carpetbagger, how dare you call me a lesbian? Okay, she's not, she didn't say that. But uh, they did call her a carpetbagger. And after the debate, a straw poll was taken where Boebert came in fifth. She's up against some stiff competition. According to the New York Times, at one point, the moderator asked the candidates, I'm not making this up. The moderator asked the candidates to raise your hand if you've ever been arrested. Six of the nine candidates raised their hands and the audience of Colorado Republicans began to cheer. And the candidates who raised their hands high-fived each other for their arrest records. The law and order Republican Party, raise your hand if you've ever been arrested. Bobert, in a moment of confusion, then lied about her arrest record, insisting she'd only been taken into police custody once. And that's a big mistake, selling yourself short, Lauren Bobert. There are at least two other arrests that I know of. Why, why weren't you bragging to Colorado voters about your criminal record? Unless... You don't want to win the nomination. I mean, this is the Republican Party. You should be very proud of your criminal arrests. Meanwhile, the New York Daily News reports this morning that Lauren Boebert's ex-husband, Jason Boebert, was formally charged by Colorado police on Saturday on two counts of domestic violence. Police say earlier this month, Jason Boebert physically assaulted the couple's 18-year-old son. When the boy went to call 911, police say Congressman Boebert's ex-husband 
threatened the son with a rifle. The couple divorced last year before becoming a congresswoman. Bobert and her husband ran a restaurant in Rifle, Colorado. It was called Shooters. It was a restaurant that celebrated the Second Amendment. Bobert has had run-ins with the Capitol Police because she likes to carry her sidearm around the Capitol building. Congresswoman Bobert, besides being an ardent defender of gun rights, calls herself a Christian nationalist, has disparaged Muslim members of Congress, calling them terrorists, and opposes same-sex marriage. Her son called the police last fall, and they came out. Her son had called the police and said, my dad's throwing me around. And the police came to do a welfare check, and Lauren Boebert was living there at the time and said, there's, I'm a congresswoman, there, there's nothing to worry about. These are dangerous, dangerous people. Driving around, speeding throughout the streets of Colorado, children playing. People call the cops all the time on Jason Bobert because of his dogs, threatening people. And he was arrested and did time in jail for exposing himself to two underage girls while he was on a bowling date with Lauren Boebert. A few years back, he was arrested and did jail time for indecent exposure to minors. That's Lauren Boebert, and we're going to lose her. We're going to lose her. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution reports this morning that the Republican-controlled Georgia State Senate voted to investigate Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis. Willis orchestrated the RICO indictment last summer, charging Donald Trump and 18 co-defendants with trying to overturn the 2020 presidential election in Georgia. So far, four of those indicted have offered up guilty pleas, including three of Donald Trump's attorneys, Sidney Powell, Jenna Ellis, and Kenneth Cheesebro. The two other attorneys... Rudy Giuliani and John Eastman haven't had time to plead guilty because they're busy getting their law licenses taken away. Republicans have been throwing mud at Fawny Willis since the indictments were handed down, and she requires round-the-clock security to handle the racially-tinged death threats. Now, one of her special prosecutors is a lawyer named Nathan Wade, who was hired by the county to try this case. And he is being paid in the neighborhood of $250 an hour, which is the going rate. Wade is getting a divorce, and his soon-to-be ex-wife is accusing her soon-to-be ex-husband of carrying on some kind of relationship with Fawny Willis. According to court records, Wade booked several travel tickets for himself and Willis, and Republicans are now accusing Willis of paying Wade $250 an hour, exactly what the other outside attorneys are getting paid. She's being accused by Republicans of what? Doesn't matter. All that matters, if you're a Republican, is the accusation. What? What is she accused of? Accepting lavish gifts from Nathan Wade because they books, he booked a, uh, a, a plane ticket? And all of a sudden, Republicans are concerned about ethics? All of a sudden, the Republicans are... Pl- clutching their stolen pearls. All of a sudden, Republicans are clutching their stolen pearls. Oh my, there's been an ethics violation. This is mafia stuff. This is low-rent mafia stuff. You go up against Donald Trump, there are going to be round-the-clock death threats, 
and private detectives will dig, dig, dig. They won't find anything. Doesn't matter. They'll find something that smells lascivious, like a vacation with a man going through a divorce, and they turn it into something it's not. For stupid people. Stupid people believe there's something there. But they turned it into something it's not. The entire Hunter Biden saga is something it's not. Which is why House Republicans want him testifying behind closed doors. That's what this whole contempt of Congress thing is all about. Charging Hunter with contempt of Congress. The Republicans want him testifying behind closed doors. Hunter wants it right in the open on television. Hunter and his attorneys, they showed up. They said, let me testify right now for the whole country to hear. Republicans can't have that because the country would realize that Joe Biden had nothing to do with Hunter Biden's business dealings. But if you force him to testify behind closed doors, then the Republicans can do what they have done with all the other witnesses in this Hunter Biden nonsense, and that is selectively leak information that sounds damaging, but when scrutinized is actually dispositive proof that Joe Biden did nothing illegal. This is how Republicans operate. From Hillary Clinton's so-called Benghazi scandal, do you know what that was about? To the Hunter Biden laptop scandal, do you know what that was about? Through this impeachment inquiry of Joe Biden, do you really know what this is about? It's about nothing, because they throw fake dirt in the public's eyes, create confusion, knowing that a good portion of the American people want to believe the fake dirt is real. It's not. We are now learning that Nikki Haley's family was swatted late last month. Police in South Carolina received a 911 call from someone claiming to have killed their girlfriend inside Nikki Haley's home and was threatening to harm himself. Police rushed to the scene. Haley was not home at the time, and neither was her family including her husband, who is currently serving overseas in the military, which would make him, according to Donald Trump, a sucker. A sucker. That's what Donald Trump calls soldiers. Suckers. General John Kelly was Donald Trump's first White House chief of staff. He kept his mouth shut until recently, Kelly told The Atlantic magazine that on Memorial Day 2017, he and Trump visited Arlington Cemetery when Trump turned to General Kelly and said of the dead soldiers, quote, I don't get it. What was in it for them? Kelly himself is a gold star father, having lost his son in Afghanistan. During a visit to France a year later, Trump refused to visit the graves of American soldiers who died in World War I, telling General Kelly, quote, why should I go to that cemetery? It's filled with losers. He talked about having a military parade when he returned and told Kelly, but I don't want amputees. I don't want to see any wounded soldiers. And then... He referred to Marines who died overseas in World War I as suckers. That's what Donald Trump calls our military, suckers. One thing is certain, however, 90% of the morons voting for Donald Trump think he served in Vietnam, and because of his service over there, America won the war. I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak. Thank you for finding me this morning. I did get the date wrong. It's January 28th, not January 29th. 
2024. This is an audio podcast. Please take me with you on your next drive, your next walk, your next protest. And of course, leave a comment and a correction. A connection, I call them. And if you enjoyed any part of this show, the best way to thank me is by hitting the like button and sharing this with your friends. Thank you to Bob, who moderates the chat room and keeps the conversation civil. I look forward to your comments, and I might do a show tomorrow night. Maybe. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, and subscribe to my channel and my newsletter.